Well, here we are. Lee Lukoski is finally home. I'm filming him tonight, and he's actually making us late right now. What, what are you making fun of me about? I said you're making us late. Well, I know, but I just got home and I'm trying to transfer all my stuff from Mexico sheep to Iowa deer, trying to get my backpack ready. You got your bow release, your backpack. I got a release, a bow, a backpack. Binos. I don't know where my binos are. They're in your bag. Oh, you already put them in there? Yes. Let's Geo! It is a mint. Hmm. I can't believe you just said that. Well, that's a mint. December 1st. I can't believe it's the first year in a long time. Probably 12 years that I haven't shot a deer in either October or November. I gotta say, this is a total BS sham that I have to drive on top of it. So not only am I filming, but I had to load everything, get everything all ready, and I have to drive on top of it. Because I have to get all the ready oh, and hooked up to Oh, my... that's hard. Okay, if you know how to get it to your to your I'm not a cameraman, and... I don't have to. <laughs> I'm supposed to be a princess. <laughs> yeah, you're supposed to be. I am supposed to be. Hey, I'm not buckled up for safety yet. Well, how about you make us a little more late then? <laughs> okay, go. We're in the driveway still. Nope. Okay. Geo, please, Geo. So we're heading out late. I mean, I didn't think we were going to see anything. I figured we'd blow that entire cornfield. But we get in there and set up, and wouldn't you know it, right before dark, the big nine shows up. He made it through November. came back the first day from Mexico as they're checking these cards and stuff and the big nine has been in here quite a bit but it's so warm it's like 47 degrees it's gonna be 50 tomorrow I think the deer may be hitting the green fields rather than the corn or bean fields right now but Thursday the temperature is just going to drop high teens and lows in the single digits so I'm gonna hunt this green field for a couple days here and then get back over on the corn Stinks, he just won't let her come into the field here. The 4th of December, and you just hope that they'll be on their feet. If not tonight, tomorrow and Friday, right at leading up to that first gun season, should be phenomenal. So hopefully I get an arrow in that big nine before the gun season. Hunting with sure bucks is like a giant chess match. You just never know what move to make. Now, these are wild deer, and they can go anywhere. So you're always second guessing yourself of where to sit. But I'm choosing the cornfield, and not just because there's north winds coming, it's that it's the end of the month and temperatures are starting to cool down too. And I have a feeling that these deer are gonna start using the grain fields over the green fields, if not now, very soon.
This deer is starting to get under my skin. Once again, he's out in the field right in front of us, but he never comes closer than 75 yards. I've been hunting Iowa for over 15 years, and I've never been skunked during the bow season. We only have two days left until the gun season opens this May and the streak. It's December 5th, and we finally got the cold weather that we've been looking for. I have a good feeling that he's gonna show up tonight. I just hope he comes close enough. Cold for days like this. You get a bunch of does out in the field by 3 o'clock. You know the big ones are gonna knock it out. Oh, it's him. It's him. The big nine just walked out. Finally. And just like yesterday, it's about the same exact time, about 4 o'clock. Hopefully he'll move his way in and get closer. You know, he was out there just for a couple minutes and he went in the woods, but now I see him over here with some does in there. I thought he was going to leave the field again like he did last night. But I think he was just going checking out these does and it's way better for us because this field kind of comes at an angle towards us. So now if he comes out over here, he'll be 20, 30 yards closer even when he walks out. But the does are, a couple does have come out with a couple hanging out. Okay, here he comes, here he comes. Yeah, 96 right now. Okay, here he comes. Here he comes. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah, baby, yeah, baby, yes. I can't believe it. Finally, that big nine came out and just giving me fits tonight. I mean, he, first he came out you know, early, walked off, and I was like, you gotta be kidding me in the woods. And he goes all the way over to the other side, 90 something yards again. I'm like, there's just no way. It's just not my year. It's December 5th and I still haven't shot a deer with my bow yet. So finally, Austin comes walking back all the way over there. Comes in, he's like at 37 yards. I go, oh, perfect, close enough. You know, move my pin, come up on him. I was like, look, and his butt's facing me. He's walking away. He's like, you've got to be kidding me. So finally, he gets out a little bit farther. I range him at 44, and I turned broadside for a second and said, good enough. And just stuck it on, you know, aiming like for his heart low because I just didn't want him to duck. And he didn't budge at all. Just tagged him right in the heart, and he fell down right on the edge of the field there. Yes, baby. Ooh, finally! Oh, look at that thing! <laughs> yeah, baby, yes! Oh, man! I can't believe it finally happened. Unbelievable buck. I mean, look at that mass out in front there. You know, he was just a 9-point last year, and actually this deer and the 12-point, both of them that I've been hunting, you know, I passed last year. I'm glad I did. I mean, this buck put you know, a bunch of mass on that extra point over there. 
and look at those big brows been rubbing you know when we saw him two nights ago i mean he had a hot doe and he was had her out in the field and was moving all the other bucks off and grunting at him and snort wheezing he put on a show for us you can see all the the wood in his brows so he just got such big thick bases and I just loved all that beating and stuff on the brows and what an awesome buck <laughs> I finally did it! <laughs> I knew it! I knew it! I knew it! I knew it! Mm. What a cool deer! Look at all he's been rubbing. I know it. I saw that. Just he didn't. He didn't have that last night. You get some circumferences on that. I know it. Because this is where I'd be measuring right there. <laughs> well, it has to really, because you got to get four. So there's one here, one here, one here, and then it's got to be one here. So it doesn't matter whichever one you think is the four and which one's the sticker. It still has to go between the three and the four. So it's going to be up in there or up in there. You know, luck always plays a role when it comes to harvesting mature buck, but you can definitely increase that luck through a lot of hard work. Now, we spent all summer long planting food plots, getting stands up, watching bucks in velvet, checking trail cameras. Now, I started hunting on October 3rd and didn't shoot my first buck until December 7th. It just goes to show you, it doesn't always happen overnight, but I wouldn't have it any other way.